I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Good morning and welcome to worship at Asbury United Methodist Church in Smyrna, Delaware. We are uh, pleased to be in the sanctuary this morning. Uh, and uh, whether you are here in person or if you have joined us electronically. Uh, I, we have a couple of announcements. Today we will share Holy Communion. You should have received a cup. Um, with the communion elements, and if you did not, please raise your hand um, and uh, someone will bring it to you. Uh, there is a wafer in the top, uh, which is a separate tab, and you have to kind of uh, work on that a little bit. And um, the uh, juice is underneath with its own peel tab. When communion is over, please put your trash in the white containers and the pews as you leave. Do not pass them to someone else or pass the white container. Just um, hang on to them until you're ready, until you're leaving. Masks are required if you stand or if you sing, uh, but you may take them off while seated and not singing. Uh, you may stay seated throughout the um, service if you choose. Um, singing is an activity which shoots the virus further, so we ask that you put your mask on while singing and do not stand during the service. The offering plates are at the doors as you leave. Please place your uh, giving in the plates on the way out. If you have a yellow card, uh, please fill out your updated contact information and place it in the offering plate as well. Even though we are reopened, we will continue online worship. Outdoor worship will continue through the end of October on the second and fourth Sundays at Glenwood Cemetery Lot. So our next outdoor service will be next week, October 11th, and that service will be at 10 a.m. We have launched our Asbury Connection House Church groups. Information is available on our Facebook page and in the lobby. We hope that you will get connected to one of our groups. We are actively looking for a new praise band director and musicians to play in our praise band. Please contact Pastor Julie directly as soon as possible if you have an interest in serving God through your gift of music. <clears throat> Let's start our worship service this morning with our call to worship. Please join in. Today, we gather around God's table from near and far. We are the people of God. Though we differ in language, custom, and tradition, we, we are, are brothers, brothers and sisters in Christ. Christ. For there is one God, one faith, and one baptism. We are we one in God's, God's spirit. spirit. We are one, and together we remember our Lord Jesus. For we are the people of redemption. He gave himself up for us so we could be reconciled to God. Come, let us worship the God of our salvation. We are not having our um, opening hymn this morning, uh, but our will, uh, because Diane was not able to be with us, um, and we will be singing freely, freely, and you don't have the words to that, so that if you, if you do know, you can sing, and otherwise, call Just on. listen.
please join me in our opening prayer that is composed this morning by the Reverend Emily McGinley and Richard Peck. O oh, Redeemer God, as we gather in worship on this World Communion Sunday, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to fall afresh on us. We pray for your Spirit to awaken new hope in us. Grant us the vision to see the coming of your kingdom. Help us to celebrate the glimpse of grace that you have given to each of us. Knit our hearts together in worship and communion so that we may know we do not struggle alone in working for your peace and justice. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 122, a song of ascents of David. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For there the thrones for judgment were set up, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For the sake of my relatives and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. This is the word of God for the people of God. We're going to bless now the gifts that we would normally collect, like in person at this point, but um, the offering plates are at the doors. And we do need to take time to be thankful for the gifts that are given so that we can continue the ministry of the church and to do the work of God in the world. Holy God, we thank you for the blessings that you pour out on us. And Lord, we thank you for the gifts and we thank you for the givers those that um, help us serve you, serve our community, and do the work of making disciples and transforming the world. So Lord, we ask that any gift that we receive, that you bless in a mighty way, that it will be multiplied and grow and go where you send it, Lord, that it will do the most good in the way that only you can make it. Lord, we thank you and we bless it all in your name. Amen. We're going to sing our doxology a cappella. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here be. Now we're going to pray for our concerns. Remember that you can put those in our concerns in our Facebook feed and um, text us, email us, message us. There's so many ways we can communicate those now. And we do pray over them every Tuesday morning at 8.30 via Zoom. So if you would like to join us, we would love to share that link with you so that you can join us 
And if you'd like to be part of the email prayer chain um, that gets all of those requests, we would love to share that with you too. Um, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. And But before I do that, I'm going to say thank you to Miss Sarah Cox, who is sitting here in place of Diane, who at the last minute was just not feeling well. So um, we want to pray for Diane as well and thank Sarah. She's going to be playing the special music this morning. Lord, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for this beautiful day, and we thank you for the seasons when we can see, especially in fall, the, the leaves are changing. And Lord, sometimes change is hard, and especially in this pandemic world, it's just hard, and it just keeps going and going. And Lord, we just, the anxiety level seems to keep rising and rising as things just change every day. Lord, we Pray for all of those that are affected by this COVID-19 virus, um, lifting up especially, Lord, our president and his wife and the staff that in the White House that are coming down with COVID, but Lord, also those everywhere around the world that are struggling with this virus. Lord, we wish you would just heal it and take it away. And Lord, restore us. Lord, we just ask for your mercy on all those that are suffering with other illnesses, anywhere from cancer to um, allergies or surgeries or recovering from falls or whatever it is, Lord. We just ask that you would touch them all and give them your grace and mercy and heal and restore them. Lord, we ask you to be with those that are grieving the loss of loved ones as the, the COVID count gets closer and closer to a number that we can't even begin to imagine and that sometimes becomes numbers and not faces. Lord, we just ask that you just be present with all of those that are grieving in such a way that they would have your peace. Lord, we lift up all of those that are working harder in this pandemic world um, and we ask you to give them strength and um, safety. Lord, those that are found that they're working less because they're unemployed or can't um, get enough hours in to sustain their lifestyles and even a place to live. Lord, we ask that you would provide. We know that that causes anxiety too. But Lord, restore, restore our relationships with one another that we would see each other with respect and dignity no matter where we are in life, no matter what our beliefs are, that we would see each other as children of God, people of God, and be, reach out in love and respect to all. Lord, we thank you for all of that and more, but especially for your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now sit back and listen. When I in all 
continue worship with the uh, with the, join in the Apostles Creed ecumenical version that's found in your bulletin I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he arose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we continue in series four of We Believe, the scriptures this morning are not the ones printed in your bulletin, but are Matthew. Uh, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 16 to 18. Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Our second scripture this morning is from the uh, book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, the example of Jesus. Since therefore we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, says, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that easily distracts. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who instead of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I want you to take a second and imagine your happy place. Now take a deep breath and say, ah, my happy place is the beach. A bright, sunny, warm day with ocean waves lapping close by, my feet dug in the sand, and a gentle wind blowing across my face. So say it again. Ah. Right? Now, has any of you ever been to the beach, or actually anywhere, warm, that's not had a breeze blowing? That can be pretty miserable, right? Did you know that wind at the beach happens? Now, this is my science geeky person coming out. When the air over the land gets warm and rises, and the air over the ocean moves in to fill the space left by the rising air, because it's a cooler temperature. It all has to do with changing air pressures and a difference in temperatures. If there's no temperature difference, then the air doesn't move, so it's stagnant. And how many of you out there know there's an actual place on the planet called the doldrums? I don't see any hands out there. I always thought it was a state of mind, you know, being in the doldrums was like a mild depression, and it actually is, but at the equator, because there are no changing pressures and no changing temperatures, there is no wind. And ships can get stuck there for a long time. So they named it the doldrums. No wind, getting stuck. It was depressing. Now, you may wonder why I'm going on about the wind. Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Last week we talked about the Holy Spirit in our series on what we believe as Christians and why. And the Holy Spirit is the presence of God living in us. 
and working through us in the power of God. And we talked about how the Holy Spirit binds all creation together. And as I said, that Spirit connects us all into what we call the church. The Holy Spirit came to us on the day we call Pentecost in a mighty rushing wind and tongues of fire. We call that day the birthday of the church. Wind is one of the metaphors we use to describe the work of the Holy Spirit in us, but especially in the church. Paul tells Timothy to fan into flames the gift of God that is in him. That is the work of the Holy Spirit who guides us, empowers us, gives us the gifts to use for Christ's work in the world and sanctifies us, making us holy. A mighty rushing wind that breathes new life within us when we claim Jesus Christ as our Savior. But often, when we use the word church to anyone who does not go to church, the word can cause a lot of conflict and anguish. There's a lot of people out there that have been hurt by the church, which they define as organized religion that meets in a building, also called churches, Some will say they've been forced to go to church all their lives and they've only found judgment and guilt there. Some will say the church is full of hypocrites and they have no tolerance for that. Well, sad to say, all of that is true. I believe that over the years, starting long before anyone here was conceived, we forgot what the church really is and what it means to be the church. And it's left us in what I will call the spiritual doldrums. So today, while we talk about what we believe about the church and figure out how to put that into words to explain it to others, it's going to be a good reminder for us as individuals and as the church, what it means to be the church and how to get back on track when we've gotten things wrong, how to get that mighty rushing wind blowing again and get us out of the doldrums. Well, the church is not really a building, and I think most of us know that. There is a difference between what I'll call the big C church and the little C church. The little C church usually refers to a local branch of the big C church, like Asbury, like Centennial, like the Presbyterian Church of Smyrna, St. Polycarp's. In the Apostles' Creed, we say, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. And many times people will say, oh, wait a minute, Pastor, I'm not Catholic, so why do we say that? Well, then if if we had hymnals out, I'd be able to point you to the little asterisk beside that little word Catholic, where it tells you that the word means universal. Long before there was a Roman Catholic church, the word Catholic referred to all Christians everywhere, all believers around the world, bound together as one church by faith in Jesus Christ. The word holy means sacred to or set apart for God. So when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we become a part of that holy church, God's people set apart and sacred to God. And we become part of each other, bound together by our faith through the Holy Spirit. Now, our little C churches, that word comes from the Greek word ecclesia, which is always translated church in the New Testament. It means a gathering of people called out by Jesus Christ who belong together to Jesus Christ. And for us, it is the church gathering together for worship, like here, to worship God, to testify to our faith by doing his will and his work in the world. And I truly believe that if nothing else, this pandemic has had the plus of reminding us that the church is not a building, but a community of believers, no matter how or where we gather for worship. See, when we get it wrong sometimes is when we see the local or little C church as its own entity that belongs to someone in particular or a specific group of people who gather there. Believing that can have disastrous results. Many of you might remember a good example, Reverend Jim Jones, who called it his church. And look what happened as he led his followers to their death. It's not the pastor's church. It doesn't belong to the families who built the church building. It doesn't belong even to the denomination whose name is on the sign out front. The church 
including all the little churches, belong to God. Many times the people in a church have destroyed the witness of Jesus Christ in the world by claiming their own authority and fit fighting over what happens with and in the church. And since the church belongs to God, our mission is to discern together through the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit what Jesus is calling us to do and then to do it. The building only matters in that this is the place we gather together, or in today's COVID world, send out by the internet the means to encourage one another, to learn, to pray, to discern. And it is our base of operations for doing the work that Jesus has called us to do in the world. The church is not the building. It is the people. But the building, called the church, often stands as a witness to the assembly of God's people as they worship, learn, and grow and give witness to their faith. It also stands as a reminder that we are not called out to live our faith alone, but we are called to live it in community. That's why we call the local church a community of faith. We were created for community, not to live life alone. We are made in the image of God, and we believe, as we said previously, in a triune God, one God in three persons. Our God exists in community, one in three, three in one. And we are part of the one church, and we are called to live in a community of faith. People will often try to say that they don't need the church to have faith. I don't need to go to church. I can practice my faith on my own. But God says no. People who try to live in this life without human contact often go insane. We need other people. That's how we were made. Our faith life is no different. We need each other to grow in our faith. How can we even begin to practice things like loving God and one another without other people of faith? We need community to hold each other accountable, to encourage each other, to learn how to forgive, to learn how to love unconditionally, and how to serve sacrificially. Jesus didn't call just 12 individual disciples. He called a community and sent the Spirit to give birth to the church. I believe that this has been a challenging time for the people of the church who rely on that connection in the building to feel that sense of community. And I'm with you if you're struggling with that loss of fellowship that we're used to in the church. It has been a challenge. However, we are not alone. And we can be together even in spirit, even when we're apart. That's the blessing of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit holds us together, unites us as one. No matter where we are, we are one in Christ through the power of the Spirit. In this day and age when so many people are searching for a loving, encouraging community, anyone who will love them and support them unconditionally, the church is God's answer to that quest. As people of faith, we are a family. Jesus said in Mark 3, 33 and 34, Who are my mother and my brothers? Anyone who does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. And Jesus says in our passage today that it is on Peter's faith in him as Messiah that he will build his church. Those who gather together as followers of Jesus Christ doing his will are the family of God that we call the church. Yet we do know there are times when we fail to be the church Jesus calls us to be. Remember, he says, they will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And we mess that up sometimes. That's the main reason I think People see the church as full of hypocrites. We say we love everyone, that all are welcome, but our actions don't always reflect that. What we do and say are sometimes not seen as loving at all. When we, as people who claim to follow Christ, point fingers, 
and spew words of hate, judge people by their skin color, their social status, what they wear, their political views, or their past. Can anyone really say that's loving? When we say mean and hurtful things to someone instead of building them up, or we don't even try to find loving ways to hold someone accountable for their mistakes, when we aren't welcoming to people, or when we don't even take notice of someone that may be new or struggling or that has been absent and don't even notice that they're not there. When we leave our church family over a disagreement instead of giving grace and forgiveness and working things out, those are times we mess it up. But the good news is that we always get a chance to start again and get things right. There are hypocrites here. Thank God. We're all hypocrites in some way, all sinners in need of grace. So it's good we're here because the church is where we can get the help we need to do better, to be better people, better followers of Christ. Every day is a new day to give witness to what God has done for us, a new day to be the church. We are the church when we care for each other. And even though we've talked about ways we get it wrong, I've seen amazing ways that we often get it right. We're the church when we send cards, when we send meals, or just call someone for those that have been grieving or who are ill or who may be lonely. We're the church when we notice that someone has been absent and give them a call or just go visit. We're the church when we pick up groceries for someone who can't get out. We're the church when we help each other in times of need. We're the church when we pray for one another and make it a point to do that each and every day. We're the church when we say hello to people and are welcoming to everyone who walks through these doors but who we see. And when we're just plain kind to people that we meet that we don't even know. So how have we been the church to someone recently? Where have we failed? How can we do better? As as part of the church, we have a responsibility to do what God is calling us to do, to live like Jesus teaches us to live, and to serve our church and community in his name as his body, the body of Christ in the world. When Jesus ascended, the church became his body, his flesh, his hands and feet in the world. How are we doing with that? There are 2.2 billion Christians in the world today. What would this world look like if we all lived out our call to be the church, the body of Christ to each other and to the world? And that's where the communion of saints comes in. I brought this out. This is my ordination stole the one I was ordained in, and there are six women of the Bible displayed on this ordination stole. Women whose lives have been examples to me of how God can use anyone to do amazing things. Those We call those who have faithfully served God and gone on to glory saints. But in this line of our creed, it does not refer only to those who have gone on before us, The saints are all Christians, past, present, and future. Saint means set apart for God, just like the word holy. It is who we are as people of God. We are saints, but we are saints in progress, too. (laughs) The Holy Spirit is working in us to sanctify us, to make us holy, and we'll complete that work as we take our final breath and are presented before God. The kingdom of God is here now because it lives in each one of us in what we call the church. But it's not here yet because the kingdom will come in full when Christ comes again. Here, but not yet. I know that can sound confusing. But we are saints living in the kingdom of God here and now. But those saints... There are our saints who also live in the kingdom of God that we call heaven. The church joins what is here and now with what has been and what is to come. When we gather together in worship, 
no matter how we're gathering, in person, online, by phone, we are standing in the present kingdom, but also in the kingdom with the saints that have gone on before us, living in that kingdom, part of the kingdom we call heaven. It is the closest we will come to heaven in this lifetime, worshiping with the saints. Feel the presence of those saints with us. The saints who have gone on before us drew on the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the same spirit that binds us together with them and with one another each and every day. This is seen in the beauty of our baptism. We have been baptized into the family of God, using the water to bind us together with all the saints. They rally around us and join with us in the unending worship of God. Our Hebrews passage gives us the image of those saints cheering us on as we run the race, run the life of faith on our way to complete sanctification, or as John Wesley would say, going on to perfection. People do better and run faster when they know someone's there cheering them on. That is what the church is for. We cheer each other on, and we know that all the saints are with us, standing on this hallowed ground, in communion with us, praying for us, and they have paved the way for us to continue that race. How that happens, again, is a holy mystery. But we know we will see our loved ones in Christ again. We know that we can feel the presence of that mighty rushing wind. And it is the same wind our brothers and sisters in Christ have felt over the years. Remember, the doldrums are a place where there is no wind. And sometimes a church can feel dead because they've stopped listening to the Spirit. So be filled with the Spirit. Let the wind of God breathe new life into you as we run the race together. Be the church today and every day. Be in communion with all the saints of today, yesterday, and prepare the way for those that will come after. Feel them here with us as we continue the work of the church. And then some sweet day, we will be all together. One church, one family, one God, one Lord, by the power of the one Spirit. Amen. And that's, we're going to prepare for that Holy Communion. So if you've got your cups, this is community. We are sharing this in community. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Please join me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 
God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today, his family in all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and wherever we are gathered, and on those gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world, and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is the sharing in the blood of Christ. If you will please access your wafer. This is the body of Christ, blessed and broken for you. And now your juice. This is the blood of Christ, blessed and poured out for you. And please join me in the prayer after receiving. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I love this last hymn. The tie that binds us is the love of Christ that we get in the spirit. Verse 3.
May the peace of the Spirit, the peace of our connection by the grace of God through the suffering and resurrection of Jesus Christ be ours this day and every day. Go in the peace of our Lord and Savior.